Topic today is grow in faith. Grow in faith. Faith is a very, very important thing um, in this group. But many a time we take it for granted. Uh, let's start with Romans 15 verse 4. The book of Romans chapter 15 verse 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So everything that was written in this Bible was written aforetime for us. Because now that we're, in a, in, in, we're living in the present, we need to go back in the past to look at how our forefathers lived. How did they manage to maintain faith under um, harsh uh, situations? So everything that was written aforetime is written for your learning. Let's go to Sirach chapter 2 verse 1. Sirach chapter 2 verse 1. The book of Ecclesiasticus chapter 2 verse 1. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. This is what the Christian church is not teaching us. If you come to serve the Lord, prepare your soul for temptation. Because once you come in this truth, life is not going to be the same. You will be tried. Not maybe, but for real. You, it will happen to every single one of us. Let's see why. Read. Verse 2. Set thy heart aright and constantly endure and make not haste in time of trouble. What is a natural reaction? The moment problem comes, what do we do? We run. See, in the world, many of us thought that we know how to handle problems because the moment problem comes, we could do something wicked and come up with the money or whatnot. But in this truth, you still have access to do something wicked, but you're not supposed to. So now you gotta endure in righteousness. It's easy for you to have a problem where you can't pay your bills, which is two grand. But you know, if you call Ray, one trip down south, you come back with 10 grand. That's not hard. Then you think because you, put, you jeopardize your life or you're handling stress, you know, hardship the right way, but no. That's the wrong way, that's not enduring. Enduring is doing the right thing and sometimes not knowing where, where or when the help will come. But you have faith that knowing that God is not going to forsake you. Read. Cleave unto him, and depart not away, that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. So we're supposed to hold on. Because if we depart from God, at the last, we're not going to be crowned with glory. We're going to be covered in shame. We're going to be in the museum, not as a uh, spectator, but as a, how you say as a spectacle people are going to be looking at you read whatsoever is bought upon thee take cheerfully now moan and groan and, and complain take cheerfully whatsoever is brought upon you take cheerfully and be patient when thou art changed to a low estate did it say if and be patient when thou art changed to a low estate. Nah, maybe. You're reading it wrong. And be patient when thou art changed to a low estate. When thou art changed to a low estate. We all gonna go through it. Because everyone gotta be tried by fire. What is the fire for us? The trials and adversities of life. We all gotta go through it. What are the three trials of faith, Oxen? Um, Shalom. Family, congregation, uh, and personal. Um, Pastor Mike behind you. Marital, congregational, and personal. Those are the three trials of faith. All of us going to go through it. At one point or another. So when those trials come, don't be in a hurry to run. 
but welcome the challenge and that's going to help you grow in the spirit good video to watch the three trials of faith by bishop nathaniel excellent video understand one thing also with certain videos and all the videos actually don't just watch them once because just like your favorite song you used to play it over and over and over those videos that when you're going through certain things that you feel like that's helping you uh, overcome, watch them over and over and over and over. So those scriptures can become morphed with your mind. You understand? So next time you're in that situation, you already know what to do. Read Verse 5. For gold is tried in the fire, and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. So just like gold is tried in fire, acceptable men is tried in the adversities of life. One thing you got to pay attention to, when you put gold in fire, to remove the impurities, what thing that, what one thing that must happen to that gold? Howard. I'll get rid of the impurities. To remove the impurity, what must happen to the gold? Uh, it must be put through fire. Okay, in the fire, what's going to happen to that gold? Uh, it's going to become fire. You're not hearing it. Uh, uh, Yosef. Uh, melt. melt the gold? Melt. The gold has to be melted. So, in comparison to us, what is the trials and the tribulations of life going to do to us? Break us down to the lowest common denominator. So that way we can see all the sins that's in us. Because many of us come within the truth, coming from the Christian church, you know, feel like, hey, listen, I've, I've given money to charity. I've always been a good person. You hear that a lot in the world, true? Because we, are, we don't understand what is to be good. So we must be broken down and rebuilt again to remove all the impurities in us. And that can only happen through trials and tribulations. Read. Verse 6. <clears throat> Believe in him and he will help thee. Order thy way aright and trust in him. <coughs> ye that fear the Lord, wait for his mercy, and go not aside, lest ye fall. So if you believe in him, what is to believe? <coughs> Howard. How do you believe? Okay. Mm-mm. Oxen? Yosef? Zebulon? Give me a precept. Uh, okay. Oh, I got it. I got 24. it. What is it? Surah 32, 24. Okay, let's read that. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 32, verse 24. He that believeth in the Lord, taketh heed to the commandments. So, to believe is to take heed to the commandments. Go back to Sirach, I mean, uh, Sirach 2. So, if you believe in him, by taking heed to the commandment, God is going to help you. Because there's no way you're doing what he wants you to do that he's not going to help you. So a lot of time we lose faith is because we're not doing what we're supposed to do in the first place. Read. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 2, verse 8. Ye that fear the Lord, believe him, and your reward shall not fail. So if you believe God and you fear God, your reward will not fail. Don't worry. He's going to come through for you. Read. Ye that fear the Lord, hope for good and for everlasting joy and mercy. Read. Look at the generations of old and see. Did ever any trust in the Lord and was confounded? Or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken? Or whom did he ever despise that called upon him? So why would it say look at the generation of old? How can you look at the generation of old? By going back in the Bible. That's why it says in Romans 15 and 4, whatsoever things was written aforetime was written for your learning. That's how you look at the generation of old. So let's look at the generation of old. What is Genesis 38? Genesis chapter 38. We're going to see if ever did any trust in God and was forsaken at any given time. Um, verse, start at verse 26. 
The book of Genesis, chapter 38, verse 26. And Judah acknowledged them and said, She hath been more righteous than I, because that I gave her not to shame. No, no, 37, 26. The book of Genesis, chapter 37, verse 26. And Judah said unto his brethren, What profit is it if we slay our brother and conceal his blood? So what profit is there if we kill our brother? What is, what is that going into? Who can um, fill me in up to that point about this story? Go ahead, Joseph. Um, yeah, Give him the mic. They were, um, they were plotting on killing Joseph. Uh, um, his, uh, the brothers were plotting on killing Joseph. And then instead, they um, they ended up selling them to the Egyptians. Okay. Read verse 27. Verse 27. Come, and let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, and let not our hand be upon him. For he is our brother and our flesh, and his brethren were con content. So, instead of killing Joseph, they end up selling him to um, to the Ishmaelites. For the Arab nations. So let's see how did our, our forefather Joseph behave while in captivity. Because the scripture says, look at the generation of old. So we should be able to go in the Bible and see examples on how to conduct ourselves under trials and tribulations. Go to um, chapter 39 verse 1. The book of Genesis <laughs> chapter 39 verse 1. And Joseph was brought down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which had brought him down thither. So Potiphar bought Joseph, right? Right. And the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. So how come the Lord was with, with, was, uh, with Joseph? Because he found favor in the south. Because he pleased the Lord. The scripture said when a man's way pleases the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. So while in captivity, you can have a little, uh, how do you say? They can ease up your burden if your way pleased the Lord. Read. And his master saw that the Lord was with him. And that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. And Joseph found grace in his sight, and he served him. And he made him overseer over his house, and all that he had put, he put into his hand. And it came to pass from that time, from the time that he had made him overseer in his house, and over all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field. So if your way pleases God, God is going to bless even the people that you work for. And trust me, they're going to know the blessing is coming from you. So they're going to keep you on the job. So if your ways is pleasing God, even your enemies at work is going to be at peace with you. And they're going to get a blessing for it. And they're going to love you for it as well. Read. Verse 6. And he left all that he had in Joseph's hand. And he knew not aught he had save the bread which he did eat. And Joseph was a goodly person and well favored. Read. And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph. And she said, lie with me. So now, your ways is pleasing God. That doesn't mean the devil ain't going to hunt for you. So everything was good for, uh, for Joseph at one point, but now there's a problem that enters his life. His master's wife wanted to lay down with him. So just because the devil was after you, let's see how to behave. Read. But he refused and said unto his master's wife, Behold, my master wanteth not what is with me in the house, and he hath committed all that he hath to my hand. There is none greater in this house than I, neither hath he kept back anything from me but thee, because thou art his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? So you see, Joseph understood the law, so he knew that he was not supposed to sin against God. And in, in committing such an act, that would have been sin. So he refused to sin against God by laying down with his master's wife. Read. 
And it came to pass, as she spake to Joseph day by day, that he hearkened not unto her, to lie by her or to be with her. So the thing you got to see is that day by day she was still hunting him. This is the situation where you and your job and there's somebody relentlessly that's hunting for you now. Why? Because things are going good for you. You are doing your job. Your boss likes you. You're getting all the accolades. So what happened? There's a hater that rise up amongst the mist. So that hater just want to see you destroyed. So the devil was in that woman. So day by day she kept hunting for him. Even after she, he said no. She kept hunting and hunting and hunting for him. Read. And it came to pass about this time that Joseph went into the house to do his business. And there was none of the men of the house there within. And she caught him by his garment saying, lie with me. And he left his garment in her hand and fled and got him out. So this is how you're supposed to deal with sin. You don't entertain sin. You don't play it with sin. Joseph ran from her. Who can give me a precept that the match that um, understanding? Because the scripture clearly say, he, uh, and he caught him by his garment, and she caught him by his garment, saying, "Lie with me." And he left his garment in her hand and fled, and got him out. What precept matches that? Brother Yohanan. I don't have it right at the moment. Guys, he fled from her. What precept matches that description? Right, go to Surah 21, uh, verse 2. Ecclesiasticus chapter 21, verse 2. Flee from sin as from the face of a servant. So Joseph understood that concept very well. Because when she first initially trying to lay with him, he said, how can I sin against God by commit such a wicked act? So when the sin pressed up upon him, he fled. So that's your life as an Israelite. <laughs> run, run, run till Christ come. Because if you keep entertaining sin, you're gonna die. You see where you thought that snake actually had him? We're gonna get to that section right there. So she, that's where she lie about him. Because if somebody lie about you committing a sin, you, there's gonna be judgment for it, right? But even though people are lying about you, there's still a way you must conduct yourself. <clears throat> Read. The book of Genesis chapter 39 verse 15. And it came to pass when he heard that I lifted up my voice and cried, that he left his garment with me and fled and got him out. And she laid up his garment by her until his Lord came home. Until her Lord came home. Said until his. Until his Lord came home. And she spake unto him according to these words, saying, The Hebrew servant which thou hast brought unto us came in unto me to mock me. And it came to pass, as I lifted up my voice and cried, that he left his garment with me and fled out. So she concocted a bold-faced lie because she was afraid that Joseph is going to tell the truth and it wouldn't be well for her. So she ran in lie first. Guess what? Joseph's going to be in trouble. Read. And it came to pass, when his master heard the words of his wife, which she spake unto him, saying, After this manner did thy servant to me, that his wrath was kindled. And Joseph's master's master took him and put him into prison, a place where the king's prisoners were bound. And he was there in, in the prison. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. You see? 
It's not the condition you're in, it's your relationship with the Most High God. Many things going to happen in your life where you might not like it, but you must endure, you must keep the faith. So no matter what position you're in, God is going to be with you. Read verse 22. And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners that were in the prison. And whatsoever they did there, he was the doer of it. The keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under his hand, because the Lord was with him. And that which he did, the Lord made it to prosper. So even in the prison, his master trusted him. Because his ways were still pleasing God. So now, why is that you're, you, you, you're keeping the Lord, you're pleasing the Most High God, and he allows Joseph to go to prison? Just, just to test his faith still? It's the trial. Test your faith. Just like God told Abraham, go kill your son. Your only son. We all must be tested in this truth. Nobody escapes it. Jump to chapter 41, verse 14. The book of Genesis, chapter 41, verse 14. Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph, and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon. And he shaved himself and changed his raiment and came in unto Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I have dreamed a dream, and there is none that can interpret it. And I have heard say of thee that thou canst understand a dream to interpret it. Jump to verse 37. Verse 37. And the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of all his servants. So Joseph basically interpreted the dream the right way. So now Joseph came up with a plan on how to rescue Israel. Uh, who can tell me what was the dream and the uh, meaning of the dream? Joseph. So um, I can't remember the exact dream, but I remember that. Then why you raise your hand? No, I remember the interpretation of the dream. But who can who remember the dream? What's your name again, brother? Brian. Brian, go ahead. Um, the dream was that the Pharaoh saw seven. He saw seven cows. He saw he saw seven cows, and it represented um. He saw seven cows and something else, and it represented the drought that's coming that's gonna come to pass, and um. He was the one to interpret it. No. Um, the dream was there were seven kind that were at the river, and then after that, seven more kind came up, and they were ill and sick. But the first seven, they were healthy. What was the meaning of it? The meaning was that one seven years would be, um, that it would be full of crops, and the next, and the next seven, and that would be the seven years of famine. All right, well said. Part of the dream was seven years full of um, also, and uh, seven, um, how do I say, year that was like low sickly as well. Go ahead, read 37 again. Book of Genesis chapter 41 verse 37. And the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of all his servants. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such an one as this is, a man in whom the Spirit of God is? And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God hath showed thee all of this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. So when you actually keep the laws, the nation's going to know that the, the Lord Almighty God is with you. And they're not going to mess with you because why? They don't want to die. They may be serving them other little misly dogs they call gods, but they know there's a supreme being. And when you uphold the laws to the level you're supposed to, they're going to know when that God is with you. 
That's why they're gonna try you. Um, actually, let's go to let's let's see this in Wisdom of Solomon. We're coming back here. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter two, verse. Uh, let's start from seventeen. The Wisdom of Solomon, chapter two, verse seventeen. Let us see if his words be true, and let us prove what shall happen at the end of him. So. The other nations, they're going to try you. Because you claiming to be an Israelite. You claiming that the Most High God is walking with you. What do you think the other nations are going to do? They're going to try to see, are you for real? Or are you just another pastor that's lying? Three. For if the just man be the Son of God, he will help him. And deliver him from the hand of his enemies. Let us examine him with the spitefulness and torture. That we may know his meekness and prove his patience. So they want to know, really, are you meek? Are you really patient like the law says you're supposed to be? Or the moment they get at you, you're going to turn out to be like a, uh, um, like a ferocious lion, just start barking at them, cursing at them, and behaving like a nigga that they, they esteem you to be. So they're going to they're gonna come at you. No way, no way, shape, form, whatsoever, no matter where you work, that they... Once they know who you are, they're going to come at you to prove whether or not what you say you are, are you really that. Because if you truly are an Israelite and you're truly abiding in the Lord, there's a distinctive way you're supposed to be behaving. And the Joseph story is written as an example of how to behave in captivity. Let's go back to, um, actually, uh, verse 20. Let's finish it. Verse 20. Let us condemn him with a shameful death. For by his own saying, he shall be respected. You see, they will only respect you when you live up to what you are saying. As a man, you say you're a prophet. Okay, let me try you to see if you're going to behave like a prophet is supposed to behave. Follow simple rules and guidelines at your job. Obey the powers that be, right? So why is it a problem for us to follow the guidelines in the job, but yet we say we're prophets? Things happen and you don't even realize everything that's happening is in direct relation to your own words. You say you're a prophet. You say you're a daughter of Sarah. Okay, show me. They're going to get at you. Now you got to show them that you are indeed a daughter of Sarah. Then they will respect you. Respect is earned, not given. You're not going to walk anywhere and people are just going to give it to you. So, because Joseph was faithful... Um, through all the ordeal that he had to go through, to what level was he raised up? Daniel. Governor. His right fire is right hand man. His right hand. So what that means? Second. Second command. In the term of today, he will be vice president. And in the days of Egypt, a pharaoh was considered a god. So he was a demigod in the eyes of the people. Why? Because he was faithful to all the ordeal that he had to go through.